Hi everybody, I'm Michael. In today's quick tips, we're gonna show you how you can easily propagate spider plants. These little cutie patooties here and here. So, you ready to dig in? Let's grow. Propagating your spider plant couldn't be easier. It's a two-step process. So what you're gonna need is, you're gonna need the host plant. This is the variegated chlorophytum camosum with her plantlets, these babies that we're gonna take one of the cuttings from today. And we also have before you the bonnie, which, is, which has these curly leaves. And we're gonna be taking a cutting from one, one of these mamas here. So besides the plants, you're also gonna need some other things. You're gonna need some distilled water or tap water that's set out for 48 hours. You're gonna need some alcohol, which we use to spray down our cutting shears. So this is the other thing you're gonna need, is you're gonna need some cutting shears. We like to spray our hands and the cutting shears so we don't move any pathogens into, into the site where we're cutting the plant. You're gonna need two vessels for the first part to put your plants in to grow new roots. And in the second phase, when the plant, when the plant plantlet starts to grow roots like we have here, you're gonna need some potting soil and a container. We will give you that, that potting mix that we like to use. We've done a video, by the way, on our channel on both the bonnie and the variegated. So you can always check and see how we maintain our plants. We do, we, we're actually growing them in several different mediums. Some are grown in leca and some are grown in soil. But we, you can always refer to that to get more, more detailed instructions. But today we're just gonna be focusing on how to, to propagate and, and transplant. So on, the, on the, the second part, you're gonna need, like I mentioned, the soil, a container to hold, hold your little ba new baby in, a chopstick or a recycled uh, plastic spoon from one of your fast food restaurants where you got something. Um, and that's about it. So what we'll do, what we'll do now is we're gonna show you um, how I go about finding the right plantlet to cut and then I'll show you how we go about doing it. So I'm gonna move the soil out of the way for right now in this other plant, and I'm going to go along this two over here. We've already sprayed our hands and the scissors with alcohol, so I'm just, I just did this so you can see it, so I'll move that out of the way. And right here, we have a large baby. And, and there's a lot of roots coming off of this burrow here. So we're gonna take, we're gonna take this, we're gonna take this baby, this plantlet from mama here. This, so this is grandbaby because this baby came from mama back here. And we're gonna now propagate this, this spider plant. So what you'll do is you'll go along uh, this flowering stem here, and then what we'll do is cut just above where uh, the plant is developing the roots along the stem here. And we'll show you this up close. Uh, and another plantlet so you can see because it's kind of hard to see from where you're at with the camera set up. And once we do that, I like to I like to cut some of the lower leaves off of the, the plantlet here before we place her in water because those are going to be kind of submerged and they may not make it anyways. So I just trim off those guys. This one, yeah, that looks good. And it's it's really this simple. So now you have your cute little plantlet. Ooh, let me flip your leaf over here. You grab your little vessel. I like these. These are some recycled uh, probiotic shots we got at, at Whole Foods. And it's just the right size to put them in there so they kind of fit snug as a bug, you know? And I need a little bit more water because the roots are barely touching. Put this down here. Okie dokie, okie dokie, Smokey. And it's that easy. You let this sit. We typically like to put this container, we like to use glass so you can see how the roots grow, but um, we always like to put this in an opaque container, set in a larger opaque container. Um, I don't have one here, but uh, we often do that because algae will start to grow in here and we don't like to have that because that just kind of robs the nutrients for the plant. But you'll let this sit out for up to a month. And once you do that, this is what you get. Look at all those roots, they're so pretty. She's ready to go. So this, so we're gonna do the two part process with you. But first let me do the other cutting here. I'm gonna go to the Bonnie over here and I see a, see a cute one, where is she? There you are, no, yes. 
Yes. So this one, I'm gonna be taking a cutting from this big knobby one here. Ooh, and sh yes. So this one has two kind of kind of tight. This the body grows really tight together. So you got to be you got to be a little more careful when you're looking to cut because there's there's another there's another plant layer right here above the one I want to cut. So you want to cut in the inner node between the two the two growing plantlets. So I'm gonna snip here. Sorry you can't see it, but I'll I'll show you an example um, with another plantlet so you can see it and right here is where all the roots will be coming out so i'm going to do the same thing i did with the other one is i'm going to cut away some of those extra leaves at the base of the plantlet because those are going to be submerged and will probably just die and it also helps the plant not uh, have too much stress because we're cutting off some of the, the leaves but these plants are so tough as those of you who know who grow these in your homes the only thing is that we keep having that persistent browning leaf tip issue with ours. Uh, but it's okay. It's just the way they're doing their thing. They're like, yeah, I don't like the, I don't like the chemicals in your water. But distilled water is pretty good at that. And I, we don't always always do that with our plants. Um, a couple one more here. We just let our water sit out for. Uh, 48 hours, two days. Okay, so now, I want to see this a little bit closer, a little bit better. We have these, this is where all the roots are gonna start. These are actually little root, roots themselves, little nubs here. And then from there, they're gonna start, they'll, they'll grow nice and big and long roots. In a couple of weeks to a month, I need to add a little more water to this one as well. And I do like these little, probiotic shot glasses because for, for plantlets and, and um, spider plants, they, 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 they fit just right. It holds them just in the right thing because if you use a larger vessel, they sometimes sink down there and you get a lot more leaves getting wet. So we like these because they can kind of fit in there um, tightly. You can use, and we've done this for um, with some of our other plants, uh, use leca and water and that we think helps um, uh, help the plant build um, new roots real quick. But here they're so small. Um, they probably wouldn't help because the, the, the plantlets are so tiny. But aren't they cute? They're so cute! And like I said, we just, oh, I think this may be off screen. I'm gonna bring it closer so you can see. But that's all you have to do. You just have to set, set her out, set them out, and they will sit there and produce these wonderful roots up two weeks to a month. And you wanna have a few inches. You wanna get about two inches of of roots before you do uh, transplanting into the uh, soil so that they have enough to, to dig in. You do not need to grow them in water. We, I prefer to do that. You can just take these plantlets and put them in soil, but they tend to tip over and, and, and wobble and you gotta keep pushing them back in there because there's not many roots for them. They're kind of top heavy uh, from the plantlets when, when you cut them. So, so we like to develop the roots to kind of do this like balancing act and then once we have enough roots, we get our potting mix, which is 80% potting mix with 15% perlite and 5% worm castings to get 100% mix. And we also like to use, I like to do this on some plants. We put a mycorrhizal, which is a fungal, a bioactive that gets um, into the, the soil and helps create this wonderful, wonderful relationship with the root of food web in the soil for your for your plants and you don't need much I've already put some in here uh, for this but it's a it's a it's a we like the big big footprint and we do this um, not always but but it's pretty good you can you it, it helps it helps your soil be be really active and and help the plant take up the most nutrients it can when you're fertilizing or just when the plant is growing so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna we're gonna transplant this this baby, this is a, this is the Bonnie. So we took her from Mama and we rooted her in water. We're going to plant her in the soil. Before I do that, though, I'm going to wet down the soil, and that will make the soil probably condense a little bit and drop down. Extra perlite that we have in our mix is great because these plants like to drain, uh, uh, drain well between waterings. And then all you need to do is. Create a little divot, 
divot in your soil. To the depth of where those roots are. Let me go down a little bit here. And you wanna, when you're putting your soil in your container, you wanna have some extra soil because once you set this in there, you wanna add, add a little bit more to, to around the edges so that you completely cover the roots. So, so let me move this. She's got some deep roots there. I'm going a little further down. Make sure. So you want to dig, put a hole, dig a hole in your in your container as deep as these roots. So now that I've done that, probably can't see that well. <laughs> and so I'll just fill backfill. Okay. I'll do it from above. I'll show you with the, another example so you get an idea of what what I'm doing here from top down view. So there we go. And. All we need to do now is just take our baby and place her in that hole, get her all nestled in there, little, little babies in her new container. And then I'll just go and get some more soil. You can use chopsticks, uh, but I like this spoon, uh, depending on the size of the plant. If it's a real small plant, chopstick works real good, but the spoon is great for getting soil and moving it around. It's like a little mini shovel. And then you just sort of add the soil around the edge of the plantlet. You don't want to have a gap of air gap um, next to, to the roots. You want the roots to be you want the roots to be all the way down in the soil. You, you can have the roots just a little bit above soil. And this is good for outdoor plants when we do videos on those. Because the main the, the, I see a lot of folks where they plant uh, plants indoor or, or, or repot them too deep, and that can cause a fungal issue around the base. So you want to have the plant growing at the this is a plantlet, but you want the, when you typically have it where the roots are, the roots go below ground and anything green goes above the soil level. You can, you can have some plants a little bit submerged on the leaves from a cutting or a small plant go below the soil, but if you go too deep, you do get a fungal issue. You can get, you can get a fungal issue and that can kill the plant. And that's not what we want. It's never what we want. We want them to flourish. So now I'm just going to tamp it down with my finger, one of the best tools ever. And now look at you all, we got a baby. Isn't she beautiful? So happy. And I want to thank you all for joining us here today. I really appreciate everyone who's, who's come to, to subscribe to our channel and or stop by and watch our videos. It, re it really means a lot to us. So to recap again is, it's a, it's a two, two part process. Uh, you wanna make sure you grab a uh, mama plant that has babies large enough to, where you can see these little roots starting to form. You want your water, you want your vessel to put your baby in for up to a month to grow the roots. And then after they grow the roots, you want your potting mix and the soil to, uh, sorry, the soil to and the container to put your plant in and voila, there you have it. It's super easy. So I really appreciate you stopping by and until next video, bye. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell and tell your friends and family. We post videos weekly. Thanks.